How's it going folks and welcome to the aquaculture area of our backyard farm. I've been running this system here as an aquaculture unit for the last couple of days getting ready to move the fish down to the new setup down there. So I thought I'd bring you along and show you the move itself and also bring you up to speed of what I've done over the last couple of days to get ready for it. Uh, so I think what I might do is just give you a quick rundown of where we're up to. So at the moment we don't have a solids lifting outlet that goes in the center over there, just a small makeshift one. It goes down to about there, so I can create a siphon and remove the water to make the fish easier to catch. I have moved the stilling well as well down to the new system and it's in the new radial flow cellular along with the solids lifting outlet. Down in here we have a replacement sump and you might be able to see down there on the pump we have a few leaks and a few drips so that hose down there needs to be replaced so that's something I'm going to do um, once the water is turned off and reduced and these fish are just getting a load of air through the air stone in this tank here. So I'm going to have to do a couple of little bits and pieces before I start to move the fish over. The other thing I'm going to have to do is move that venturi down to the other fish tank as well. And just to make sure the fish have been safe the whole time, I have been monitoring the ammonia and the nitrite levels twice a day. And the ammonia hasn't budged its stage trace, which it's always been. There's always trace in most aquaponic system, but there's been zero nitrite. So I know that everything is being processed within the biofilter. Just before we have a look at the new system and then grab the net to move the fish, I just wanted to thank all you folks who do come along every week, thumb up the videos and leave a comment down below, even if it's just g'day. I do appreciate it because it helps promote the video in the algorithm. Also wanted to thank all you folks who are supporting the channel through the YouTube membership platform and the Farm Your Own Yard patron page. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links down below to them or you can hit the little join button under this video. And lastly, I wanted to get all the ads out of the way and remind you folks that I do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide available, 1995 US. You can ask me for help through the guide. Plus, it also runs through everything from what is aquaponics, how to build your own little system out of a recycled IBC, and all the bits in between about plant selection, fish selection, and things like that. Now, that's enough of me rabbiting on. Get all that out of the way at the start, and we'll go and check out the new system. So the new system's had a few upgrades, namely another media bed in. And I'm not too happy with this media bed, but I'm going to show you a fix for with what's going on here in a little while. Basically this stand pipe on um, this shroud is too short. It was too short when it was up the top as well, and I forgot to change it out. Put the media in, but yeah, I've got a fix for that uh, component that someone gifted me. So yeah, that bed there is full of water and running as a constant flow at the moment. So is this one here because I just wanted as much water from the old system in here as possible because it will be carrying nutrient for the plants and also biota or the bacteria that can convert the ammonia all the way through to nitrate, which is fish friendly. A uh, quick update on the plants. Over there, the dual root zone bed is going well. This bed here, you might remember from the last video, um, yeah, I, we went away the next day and unfortunately I left the inflow running too fast and the siphon didn't break and we only ended up with a small amount of water at the bottom. So everything with shallow roots, that's the oregano or oregano, and the sage over there, and also my mushroom herb, I'm really kicking myself I didn't save more, they all perished. And the warrigal greens, its roots are a lot deeper, so it's done all right. And as you can see, it is suffering a little bit of a nutrient deficiency at the moment. I say a little, a big one. Um, so it really could do with some fish in the system to give us some nutrients and I transplanted out just a small section of lemongrass yesterday and the black turmeric, gave it a bit of a haircut as well and there will be more lemongrass going into this system. I also have the other beds, uh, uh, plants, sorry, I took out of the satellite bed. It's just been a little bit too hot to transplant them in. Down here, I did mention the stilling well is in the um, radial flow settler now. It's doing its thing. Uh, so much so that it has collected a lot of the muck that was, oh, you might be able to see the brown down there, a bit hard to see really, has collected a lot of the muck that was floating around the system from the various grow beds and the muck that was in there. So it's done its job. Over here in the moving bed bioreactor, we have an air stone but no media. That media will be coming down probably before I move the fish. Oh, actually I might do that after I move the fish so they're not too stressed in there, a small amount of water and then that way they'll have some added biofiltration. Over here in the fish tank, it now has a lid. 
Uh, the main reason we got this screen here as well because we've got a backyard light and we don't want it to uh, flash the fish and make them jump because they do tend to jump with flashes. So what we're going to do again, like the one um, up under the deck there, this will be held back to a point. So they always have um, access to sunlight. Not that they really need a lot of it, but they're going to be used to us walking over the top of the tank and not, you know, startle and jump every time we open it. Down in the bottom in there, you might be able to make out, it is virtually a clear floor. And that is because I've been coming in randomly and giving it a bit of a sweep just to suspend those solids. And that solids lifting outlet has done a fantastic job of picking them up and depositing them over there into the radial flow settler. And as you can tell, that is the same solids lifting outlet that was in the other tank, although it is a little bit cleaner. Over the back there, we have just a makeshift inlet. Uh, what I decided to do was drill a hole through the tank wall, just like the other one, pop in a uni seal, a section of pipe, a fitting on the outside to connect to the nut and tail style connectors I like, and then I'm going to come down in a tick and pop the Venturi in there once we re start removing water from the other system, which, yeah, we'll give you guys a bit of a gander at. And I forgot to mention, we also moved the electrical cabinet down the bottom here, but you'll see that later in the video. A bit of an update on the water conditions. The water temperature in here is 22 degrees Celsius. It is 21 in the other system. So that's fine just to move them over. The pH in this one is 7.7 .7 from memory. And the in the other tank, it is 7.4. So yeah, there's that small of a difference between the pH. I'm not concerned about putting them in considering when we dose the system with calcium hydroxide under the plant bed inlets. Um, the pH can jump well over that in a single day, so I don't think they're going to be too stressed. I've also added in just under a, a kilo's worth of salt in the system. I didn't go the whole kilo because the water I've been adding in has already got salt from the other system. And the salt is just a general all-round tonic. Not only does it help mitigate against brown blood disease or nitrite poisoning, it also helps promote a healthy slime coat on the fish. So yeah, I think we are pretty much well right to go. So folks, I have my lovely assistant down here. Jack. And Jack and, and Bianca. <laughs> and, all right. Say hello. 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 Uh, so what we're doing now is we're going to try and empty uh, about, about half of the water out of this fish tank here. Now what I've done is turned off that valve and I've got this little end cap here. I'm going to pop that in there and then open this valve. It's a very, very, very sticky valve. And that will hopefully create a siphon. What would also help is if I open this valve here, it just allows a little bit more water out and also turn off the power to the pump. So the pump is now off and you should be able to make out that that is draining. Now if the anchor would just like yes, to hold this around here, I'm going to remove the Venturi on the other side. It's going to have to lift the lid up a bit for this. I've just got a 316 stainless steel screw in here just to keep it in place. Now this can go down to the other system if you'd like to join me, Bianca. Now, I wasn't going to tape this, but as I listened to my wife, I've as decided, should. as I should, I've decided to tape this. Uh, just with the Teflon tape, it just helps create a slightly better seal between the PVC, especially if you're running a screw in, because that can sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes distort it. Now, I'm going to use a bit of brute force here. Oh, by the way, I also changed that um, elbow as well. Wasn't happy with the other one. Thought I'd put a new one on. I'm going to use a bit of brute force here. Uh, the angle of this doesn't really matter because I can also twist this um, pipe. I'm going to give this a tap. There we go. Zap through. First of all, put my little scoop underneath. Zap through a hole and then a 316 stainless steel screw pick up all the other plastic that just fell in here we go so we didn't get the water down as far as I'd like that's because um, yeah the seal must have broke there we got a little bit of extra water out but not yeah nowhere near as much it is going to be a little bit difficult to see these guys, uh, but I will be opening this top right up uh, when I start netting them. Anyway, we need to get the uh, pump down there. I just need to undo this. I've actually made up a new one of these sections because this one here was leaking. 
and it was leaking from up the top here as well. So this pump, give it a good clean in there. While we're at it, get everything off the grill. As you can see, I haven't really been doing a lot of pump uptake or upkeep lately. Well, what I want to do is remove this um, stainless steel hose clamp here, mainly because yeah, this is just leaking. And I will pop it on the new section I've made. I don't know how easy this is going to come off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's just a little bit too loose for this. So, what I might do is I might actually wrap the one down the bottom there with some um, plumber's tape anyway. So, I'm grab my lead. If you'd like to follow me, Bianca. I can do that. By any chance, did that pump used to be orange? Yes, it did. <laughs> it used to be orange. Now, this is just a little bit too narrow for the 25 mil pipe. The pink tape would probably be the way to go, but I just thought I'd wrap a lot of this uh, white Teflon around it. Uh, it should be all right in the end, I think. That is a lot, isn't that it? That is a lot. I was going to say, if you've got shares in this stuff. No. <laughs> um, that's a stainless one, but this one's already on here. So, um, put this on. There we go. Well, the Teflon didn't bunch, so that's a good sign. Screw this on. And we won't know if this is leaking until the sump lowers anyway, but yeah, I, it's not going to come off. So I don't think we're going to have an a, a problem there. I think there's enough tape that it probably won't work. Yeah. <laughs> so just taking off everything here from the existing pump. And we're going to have that run back into the sump. That's just the, it's created a siphon back from the um, Venturi, no drama. Now this one over the back might be a bit hard for you to see. I've used an elbow here. And there's no washer in there. It must have fallen off while I was putting it in. Anyway. There's the small little pump that was in there. So I've made this a little bit too long. So when I made this, I copied the links from the other system. Actually needs to come down oh, by about half. So pretty easy fits really. Means I have a small little bit of extra hose to use somewhere else. There you go. These things happen to us all. Just in a bit of a rush to get this done. Without thinking, I've sort of um, made the process a little bit longer. Can I have some tape, Bianca? I don't think there's enough on there. Are you certain? I'm positive there's oh, not enough on there. I suppose you have compressed it just a little. I have. And no, I don't have shares, folks. It's Bianca. <laughs> Maybe we should get shares in this stuff. There we go. There's a little bit extra. That's going that way. That's going that way. That's going that way. So popping on like that. There we go, and again with this hose clamp down the base where it's the fattest. This is the line that will be going out to the grow beds. Now, just to make things easier, I'm putting an angle on it, just because I would like um, the pipe or the hose not to flex too much. So, just try and make sure it goes in the right direction. There we go. And this washer is for the other side because apparently it's missing one. So I'll pop this in here. There we go, fellas. And that's a lot better. So pop a washer in there. Screw this on to the angle. And the 90 degree angle isn't a huge um, issue with it going out to the beds. I mean, if it was PVC, it'd be full of 90 degree angles because the beds don't really need that great a flow. And now we have the washer for this one from up here. This is the um, line to the fish tank. I'll screw him on. Nice and tight. That was on tight, everything's on tight. This is the little waterproof box with the pump in it, the pump connection. So that's the old pump. Lead. We'll get rid of that out of the mix. Thanks, babe. And yes, Jack. Hello, Jack. How are you, Jack? Go eat your passion fruit. Go. Jack's got a passion fruit that the possums have knocked off out of the tree. Just clean all the debris out of there. And pop these leads back in. Pop that down. Creates a watertight and vermin-tight seal. 
So this little power selector is just going to go there for now. But I will find somewhere a little bit more watertight for it. Maybe just put a little box over the top just so rain can't get in there. I think we're ready to turn the pump on. Did I turn it on? Yes, you I did. did. You might. Oh, the water level's dropped. The water level. Don't take long to jump back up. That looks like it's doing a much better job. It's also running at around about 8,000 litres an hour, I think, at the moment. Uh, you will notice there's a couple of drips coming out of the assembly there. I'm not overly concerned about that because they're not going anywhere. They're just going back into the fish tank. In a perfect world, um, yeah, I would have used Teflon tape around that, um, the end, that little, where are we? There. That little join there. Section. Anyway, let's pop this back on. I think we got all the debris I just knocked into the tank out. And we might go grab some fish, Bianca. What do you reckon? Yep. Not a Sounds problem. I'll like just set these cameras up for everyone so they can see what we're doing. Time to get wet. So folks, here we go. Now there is an option for me to use clove oil to try and sedate these guys, but I've seen people do that, put in too much and kill their fish. I don't know the exact weights and everything. So I'm deciding to not do that. I will, however, whoops, just take um, this out. So if they scoot around the tank, they don't bump into it and hurt themselves. So I don't want them to hurt themselves. Now, Bianca, you might be on the wrong side, my dear. Yes. Now, it's a bit hard to see with the bubbles on the top. I do like to take it slow and steady with these guys rather than chase them all around the tank. So we have one. Take him down quickly. There you go, fella. Another one. So there we go, folks. There's a beautiful looking jade perch. The typical black markings on them. A little bit of a green here. So I've just turned the air stone off because it's going to make it easier for me to see these guys. Because I really don't want to have to um, chase them around too much. Two in this one. So we won't make you sit through every single fish, folks. Uh, one tip I will give you though, is I like to take it slow when netting these guys. I don't know if it's the type of net or not, but they tend to just swim into it if you bring it up from underneath them and then just quickly raise it. And that's pretty much well the method that I've come to use with these jade perch. Other species may be slightly different, but yeah, I thought it might be a bit of a tip a few folks could use. And then there was one apparently, folks. Oh wow, if I take my glasses off that are covered in water, I can actually see. See him? Oh. That's the last one. That's got him. Lucky last. So there we go, folks. Oh. I don't know how easy it is to see him down the bottom there. But they are all in. Oh yeah, you can see them. And there's water all over the lens. How's that, folks? Better? <laughs> Better? <laughs> Um, yeah, we're just going to monitor these guys over the next couple of days and see how they go. They should be all fine. Um, next thing I have to do though is turn the grow beds back on because I want that water cycling. Just to show you, I have brought the other pump down before we do the biofilter and I'm just going to pop the air stone in here. Just for the time being, just so the fish have some air. Pop that in there. Even though they've got air through the venturi, I do like them to have more than one source. It's actually going to come down from the, um, the top of the hoop house once I get it all sorted out. Now onto the biomedia. So to begin with, I need to take out the fittings from the moving bed bioreactor. And the little air stones that are in there. So people have asked me how much biomedia is in here. And to tell you the truth, I forget. I think it's 30 litres. These buckets, I think, are around about 15 litres. It's a bit of a complex um, calculation, but a, a good rule of thumb is basically one litre or one quart of this style of media per 500 gram or um, one pound fish. So we're just going to um, put this media straight into the biofilter now. Whoops, and make a bit of a splash. 
And none went over the back, that's a good thing. I've actually stuffed up because I've just realised I haven't put the correct inflow yet in here. But we have an outflow. This was the inflow as you saw it before. Just pushed on here as an outflow. Pop the lid back on. Get another load. So just to show you folks, I can now take this section here out. That the water level is low enough. And this will be our inflow into the other filter. So I'll put it in with this bucket here. So now to get the rest of this out. And try not to spill it everywhere. So now... We're going to put the inlet in. I'm just going to take that T-fitting off. And we're going to put this inlet on with a 90 degree. Because I put these holes right near the top to basically allow as much water as possible in these drums, both of them. And this outlet here being at the top will prevent any siphon from occurring. And that media shouldn't go back to the radial flow settler, but I've seen stranger things happen. So I'll just bring it down close. And I think that's good enough. So there we go. We have the water now entering down through the 90 at the bottom. And then it has to come up through this pack, which I'm yeah not too happy with the way she's going. There's basically, I don't think, enough in there. But yeah, it'll do for now for what I want. Or only you know once I add the next lot in. Yeah, as you can see, we are having issues. Another thing I can do is have this going straight out. I'll just go look for a fitting. So there we go, folks. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to fine tune it a little bit and probably put another one of them in there. Um, yeah, just so we get a wider spread of bubbles. But for the time being, that's fine. I also need to drill a hole through the side for that. But I can do that at another time. For now, that's the bio done. Now, I did mention before we had an issue with this bed. Basically, the um, standpipe is too short. There's an easy fix for that. You can get these little inspection um, adaptions. Uh, they're a little screw cap. Other people actually put these on their um, their shrouds, but they're very expensive compared with an end cap with a few bits cut out. Just slide on and off really easy. If you don't have them cut out, they can grab on there. That's why I like to cut them out. Now this just needs to go around there like that. Push on easily and screw that on. And that means I can put the extra clay that I have down around this now. Just a little bit extra just to top up this end of the bed. And we'll have no problems with that going down in there when I unscrew this to check with the bell. So yeah, nice little easy fix. One that didn't cost me a cent. Thank you very much, mate. I know it's only been 30 seconds, but a quick update on this little system. Drill some holes in the top, otherwise it'll act like a giant bell. So there you go, lesson learned. Just started to fire off as I pressed stop on the record. So yeah, I've just gone up and zapped a couple of holes in there. That way, it won't induce a siphon, and I can just run it as a constant flood. You live and you learn. There's the fish in their new home, and they don't seem too stressed. I know they probably didn't like being netted, chased around the tank and moved down here, but they're down here now. I'll keep an eye on them over the next couple of days. Probably won't feed them straight away. Maybe a day or two time, I'll give them something to eat. A couple of them were very curious and came up and had a bit of a gander when I was putting this hook in. That's just to keep this from closing because I hate opening and closing lids on a tank all the time for fish. I don't think it's fair on them, it spooks them. I do need to make sure that this is also tied down at the front because the wind can pick this up and throw it over that way. So that's all sorted. The new solids lifting outlets in there. The air is over the backside now, again with the Venturi, just like it was up the top. Uh, the pipe coming out into the solids lifting outlet is doing as it's expected to do. It's lifting solids into the settler. The settler probably could have been clean today, but I didn't. I'll do that through the week. Actually need to source another length of uh, PVC because I used that one there. Um, yeah, I, I stole it from there. So I need to get another metre length so I can do my bleed off. So to save water. The moving bed, a bioreactor. I've played around with it a bit. I've just got the airline zip tied into the centre. It just seems to give it a better spread, but I do think I need to add some more stones in there uh, just to yeah, spread the air around a bit, just so we get a nice even um, churning, boiling um, pattern. And then the water's just running straight down into the sump. And again, the beds are still running as a um, constant flood just for the time being. So the other thing I've done is hooked up the backup air supply in here. It's just got a little relay down the bottom and whatnot. There's a video you can check out on that. Shows you how it's made. A little, uh, I think it's 55 litre a minute air pump in there. 
So to simulate a blackout, turn off the power that keeps that little relay open. That little pump turns on and the fish are now swimming in a spa bath. All that air is coming through there. And those check valves, I'll just turn that back on. And those check valves, where are we? This one here, stops the air coming back through to this compressor. So there we go. That is this system pretty much well up and running now. So next week we'll do a little bit of an update showing you the plants going in. And yeah, just if we've had any teething problems along the way. So it's the next morning and just to show you, I have planted a few bits and pieces out in there. And I've also taken out the uh, bell from both beds just to keep the water level nice and high. So the roots of those freshly planted lemongrass there, a little crump there, parsley over the back, which I'm not too sure will make it, some thyme and a couple of green onions. Hopefully their roots will sit in water and not succumb like these other poor fellas here, the oregano and mushroom herb that died off. I have been fishing out a little bit of media from the sump that's just been suspended in water. Um, yeah, it becomes neutrally buoyant and hard to get out. So that's been going into the moving bed bio that does need some tweaking to get a wider spread of air. Now the stars of the show, the jade perch, as you can see, they're all present and accounted for. Um, a lot of people get concerned when they see um, large fish like this getting moved, basically thinking that, you know, something's going to go pear shaped. These guys came over just fine. In fact, you can see the bottom of the tank is almost spotless. And that's because these, oh, someone's hungry. Uh, these fellows here, they move along the base of the tank and that disturbs the solids, which go up the solids lifting outlet and into the filter, as I've explained many times. Now, pH wise, uh, we have seen a small drop. And I dare say that is just due to the fact that there is now a constant source of ammonia in there, these fellows here and the bacteria consume alkalinity when they process the ammonia all the way through to nitrate, both forms. So that's why this will drop. And yeah, hopefully we won't have to be adding too much um, alkalinity to there anytime soon. Main alkalinity we add is potassium bicarbonate and I also use calcium hydroxide, which is pretty much all just a pH boost. And the water temp is sitting at 20, uh, second day or third day of spring here. So these guys, yeah, from now on in should be little piggies and consuming loads of food. One other thing, I did a water test earlier and as you can see, the both the ammonia and the nitrite are nice and low. So I have no issues whatsoever about the, um, the water quality in this system with the pH and the ammonia being hunky-dory. So there you go, folks, that's this system done. Tomorrow I'll be pulling it down, moving it out so we can refinish the timber on the deck for when we move to our farm. Uh, more on that on our other channel. If you want to suss it out, there's a link up there and down in the description. Bits out the back homestead, so definitely check that out. But anyway, um, this system needs to be pulled down and eventually that system I've just made and shown you will be pulled down and also moved. So that'll be happening down the line and I'll bring you along for that as well. I figure I might as well um, show you that one coming down and an all new systems coming to the channel down the track. Uh, in the meantime, there may be a couple of weeks where you get re-uploads or uh, just little short sort of informative videos because I will be busy moving. Now, before I go and sign off from this aquaponic system from the last time, I would like to thank you once more for coming along and sussing out these videos, thumbing them up and sharing them with your family and friends. Really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who's supporting the channel through buying the guide and also also supporting us through the YouTube membership uh, platform and our Farm Your Own Yard patron site. Really do appreciate the um, support, folks. And yeah, I suppose for the last time, I will say see you later from the area where this aquaponic system was set up. I'm going to miss it, but I'll see you folks next time. Cheers all and have a top one. You can film me if you want. I'm a little bit shy. <laughs> Want to see my boobies? <laughs> you aren't that shy if you're going to show me your boobies. I've seen you naked in the garden, boy. Shh.